everybody, Deborah Dickinson here. Thank you for being on my channel. I'm so glad that you are on this journey with me and Bandit. Today we get to celebrate with Jana, frugal RV gal, that she got a major upgrade on Penny. So we're going to show you that, but then let's talk about why is it necessary, was it necessary, and what it means to you, even if you're not on the road yet, but are considering it. So, Jana, congratulations on your new solar install. Uh, I know. We'll have to go up there on your uh, up on the roof. Okay, so you had 180 watts. I had 80 watts on the roof, and then I had a hundred watts uh, suitcase. Cool. So I would have to get it out and move it around all the time. And, and you uh, attached it to your battery, so you don't have to uh, move, undo that and move that and everything anymore before you get ready to travel. You also were having to get underneath your truck. What was that about? Well, it's a long story, but I'll make it <laughs> short. My truck camper batteries were failing, and in doing so, it was draining my truck batteries. So, for the Tyson Wells show, I wanted to make sure that <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> stranded here. So, every night when I'd get back here, I would unplug the camper from the truck so it wouldn't drain the, um, the, the truck battery. So, for about a month and a half, I guess, I've been doing that because I got the estimate sometime in December. Yeah, and it, I was going to say, it wasn't just for Tyson Wells. You were doing it every day no matter what. True. Yeah. But especially for Tyson Wells. Yeah, because you want to be sure we could roll fast. And uh, so, and you have two new batteries. What do you have? I have two 100 amp hour lithium batteries. Cool. A total of 200 amps. And I only did that because of the restriction of my battery compartment so otherwise you might have gotten a third one or bigger or batteries. bigger batteries yeah. yeah but it looks great okay so uh reach in your pocket and show everybody what your controller looks like <laughs> her, contro it's, it's her, fancy. her controller is her phone because yes. everything's bluetooth everything's bluetooth so I have an app for my battery. There's an app for that. There is an app for that. So right now my battery is at, there we go, 100% and it's idle, meaning it's not receiving any power from the sun because it's 100%. And that's just for the batteries. You have a whole... This is cumulative. So that's both of my batteries. So I can go to mode and that shows both of my batteries. That is so cool. And then uh, I got a Victron charge controller. It's connecting, 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 connecting. So it's my charge controller shows me right now and it's 3.47 p.m. in the afternoon and I'm floating, meaning <laughs> my batteries are 100%, meaning the, sol the solar panels are just idle right now, not doing anything. The charge controller has those turned off not to take in power, so. Um, That's gonna be so nice for you. And I'm using 23 watts. I gotta re read a little bit more about the apps. <laughs> well, she, you just got home from picking all this <laughs> up. So, this, yeah, it's like, so oh. awesome. So, and then you can look at the history and then even trends. If you want to read a graph, you can look at the graphs. So it's pretty cool. And so you'll be doing um, an in-depth or, or a d more detailed video on your channel of your solar install and that is frugal rv gal but overall and and you'll tell them where you went and everything but uh, do you want to maybe maybe just, it, it just depends yeah. so i'll leave that to you so y'all go check out frugal rv gal but overall how happy are you <laughs> <laughs> i'm ecstatic <laughs> frugal rv gal <laughs> 
A lot of people say you don't need solar. One, you can use a generator, I guess. But if you have a brain injury like me and you can't be around generators, that prohibits that. Plus, when you're out in nature like this, who wants to hear a generator? Solar is the only other way that you're going to be able to charge your devices. And if you've read my book, How Being a Nomad Saved My Life, you know how naive I was when I came out here. I didn't even have anything to charge my devices and had a major mishap before I even got out out of town because of electrical and power issues. So over the nine years I've been out here on the road, it is something that I have learned about. I remember the first time that I got my first solar panel in 2015 from a guy that used to be on the road named Will. At the time, Bob and Jamie had that on their joint channel, but I don't think it's out there in circulation anymore. I'll never forget that day though. So Frugal RV gal, was it just a luxury? No, probably not because what she was having to do is go underneath her truck and disconnect her camper uh, power from her truck batteries every time she parked. And you know, she's younger than me, <laughs> but as you know, that can get grueling. And the older you get, and if you have uh, mobility issues, something like that can just get to be to where it's impossible. So that was necessary for her. And be sure you go to her channel, Frugal RV Gal. She'll have it up pretty soon. All the details on her solar panel. But also because it was draining from her truck batteries. And yes, she knows about all of that and how not to have that happen. And it's been rewired and it's all been taken care of. But it got to where her truck wouldn't start sometimes. <laughs> Fortunately, she could run her generator, plus she's got all kinds of backup for backup to get her truck going. But that's something that you need to know if you come out here. What are you going to do for solar? What are you going to do if that solar craps out? What are you going to do to take care of your engine batteries? And it's just things that you can learn along the way, but I hope that you don't have to learn the hard way like I've done. And it's just things that you need to consider. It can be very laborious, physically and manually draining, moving those solar panels around all the time if you have portable. Again, the older you get and depending on your mobility issues, that can get grueling. So going the way that Frugal did, going top of the line, getting it taken care of so that she doesn't have to worry about it anymore is definitely the way to go. But you need to ask yourself, can you afford it? I certainly can't. I'm using this 300 watts on top of Phoenix that I had on my van. And I'm using the original three 100 amp hour Lifeline batteries that I got back in the day. I'm hoping they will last, but I hope this helps you think of things that you might need to consider. Again, thank you for being on my channel. Be sure that you have subscribed and like and share and comment. All of that helps and I really appreciate it. We'll see you down the road, everybody. Keep on keeping on. <laughs>